Division is a way of doing a repeated subtraction problem where you would be subtracting the same amount each time again and again and again and again until you couldn't subtract that amount anymore. A repeated subtraction is a longer process. Division will get us to the same answer more quickly. Now let's consider money. Let's say that we've got $50 and we're going to split that up among eight grandchildren. Each grandkid's going to get exactly the same amount and because we're working only with whole numbers at this moment, each kid is going to get a whole number of dollars and anything that's left over that we can't give out to all of the eight grandkids, we're going to go ahead and just tuck that right back into our pockets. So we can start with lining all the grandkids up and going one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar. Move back to the start of the line. One dollar, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar. So each time we're subtracting off a dollar, moving from the front to the end of the line of kids, until we eventually get that each kid's got a stack of dollar bills, six of those dollar bills. I'm going to still have two dollars in my hand, I can't break that up because again, we're only working with whole numbers at the moment. So that is what I've got for the end result. Each kid gets $6 and I have $2 left over. Well, I don't want to have to travel up and down that row of kids, especially if I am the grandparent. I'm going to eventually get tired of having to walk up and down. So what's an easier way of doing things? Well, setting aside that you could do it on the tabletop, What's an easier, quicker way of actually coming up with that answer that each kid gets six dollars and that we're going to have two dollars left in our hand that can't be passed out to those kids? Well, that's what division is going to do for us. It's going to get us there quicker. So that quicker setup is having the division eight divided into 50. So eight goes into 50. Well, eight doesn't go into five, first of all. So kind of talk about a little of the technical thing. Eight doesn't go into five. So I've got to use the next part of the number underneath here. Eight goes into 50. Eight goes into 50. Based on my times tables, I can get eight goes into 50 six times without going past 50. Eight times six gives me 48. Do a little subtracting here, telling me that I'm going to be left over with 2. So 6, remainder 2. The quotient would be 6. The remainder is 2. These are the two parts of the answer that we need at this moment doing whole number division problems. Officially speaking, the parts of the division problem that we originally were looking at, the dividend is 50. That's the thing that's getting divided up. And the 8 is the divisor. That's the thing that does the dividing. Now, this is a bit difficult to just flat out write in words, step 1, step 2, step 3. It's a little bit more Let's just say easy. It's a little bit more easy to follow if we take a look at an example. So let's have an example that is not too awfully crazy, but still has enough going on that gives us a good idea how to work through division problems, even ones that might be more complicated than this particular example. So 2,317 divided by 4. We need to take this, we need to turn it around into a long division problem. So that first number, 2,317, is going to go underneath of our division problem, our long division symbol. The 4 is our divisor. The 4 goes out in front. So that we can now read this in a slightly different way by saying 4 divided into 2,317. Notice there's a difference in phrasing. 2,317 divided by 4, 4 divided into 2,317. 4 does not go into 2 nicely, 
So I have to take not just the two, but the number that comes after it. So four goes into 23. Based on my times tables, four goes into 23 five times. I can go in five times without going past the number 23. So I'm going to put the five above the three that I'm using when I ask that question. Four goes into 23, how many times? 23, so there's the three. I'm gonna put my answer above that three to help me keep track of things, help me end up as far as future division problems, especially when you get into decimals. Making sure that I got everything in the right spot. Moving on now, take the five times the four, get 20. I'm going to do the subtraction there to find out how much is left over. Just from the 23, I have three that's, le that's left over. Now, I also have the other numbers that haven't been touched yet, a one and a seven. So go ahead and drop those down. What we've essentially done now is we have made this division problem a little less nasty because the next part that we would have to work out would essentially be four divided into 317. No more thousands junk going on, just hundreds junk, so a little bit nicer. And the idea is that each step that we do with our division is going to eventually get us down to a nicer problem until we reach a point where we can't do those steps anymore. We want to kind of go through this same sort of cycle. We've got a little division question, we've got a little multiplying work, a little subtracting work. Anything we haven't used gets carried down. So we take a look at the next cycle where we're worried about four going into 317. We're not worried about the entire 317. We're only going to worry about the 31. We're gonna make this as manageable, as nice as possible. So four goes into 31. Seven times without passing the number 31. Seven times four is 28. Do a little subtracting. I get a remainder of three. I haven't used the seven, so we drop that down, and we've done another cycle of steps. So we've done a little division question, a little multiplying, a little subtracting, and anything that wasn't used got dropped down. So now we're looking at this problem, and it's nicer still. Four divided into 37. Even nicer than the other division questions that we've been worried about. So we do our cycle of steps again. And when we reach the end of this next set of steps, we'll actually have done as much as we possibly can. Four goes into 37, nine times. Nine times four gives me 36. Do a little subtracting, I get a remainder of one. There are no other numbers for me to drop down. My remainder, at the very end here is smaller than my divisor out front. So I've reached the end of my problem and can now assemble my answer. My answer is in two parts, the quotient and the remainder. And we've already said the remainder is down here at the bottom. The quotient turns out to be the stuff that's at the very, very top. So the quotient comes first, 579, and the remainder from the very bottom is the second half of our answer, so remainder of one. Realistically, as far as working these problems out, you would not have this full set of steps where you're eating up a lot of real estate on your paper. You would have done this much. We can take that same basic plan of attack and we can upgrade it for problems where we have larger divisors, like for instance here, 8,888 divided by 39. No longer a single digit number for our divisor. Now we've got a 39, two digit number, making things a little bit more aggravating to work through our steps, but still the same basic plan of attack. I first need to rewrite the division problem so that I am using my long division symbol, which means that our 39 is going to be going out in front of our long division symbol and the 8,888 
is going to be going underneath. 39 goes into 8. No, it does not. So I will not be putting a number above the first 8. I will now be changing my question so that it is 39 goes into 88. That is true, it does. 39 goes into 88. How many times? Well, I can move off to the side and check out some multiplication work and see how things go. 39 times 2 gives me 78. If I did 39 times 3, I would pass 88 and have a larger number. So 39 goes into 88 two times. The 2 that we have answered goes above that second 8. We already said that 2 times 39 gives us 78. So we do a little subtracting. We get a little remainder. And we carry down any digits that we have not used yet. Now we have things that are a little bit nicer. 39 goes into 1,088. It's a smaller number, so arguably a little bit nicer for us to try to work the rest of the way out. But we're going to start back with our set of steps. We're going to take the 1 and the 0. We're going to throw in that very next number, 8. We're going to be asking ourselves, how many times does the 39 out front go into 108? Well, again, we had already worked out 39 times 2 gives us 78. It turns out that that's the best that we can do so far. 39 times 3 would be going too far. So another 2, and we're putting it above that third 8. 2 times 39 gives us 78. We do a little subtracting. We get a little remainder going on. And again, arguably, things are better than they used to be. 39 goes into 308. Well, we need to get ourselves kind of in the right ballpark here. So we can try a little bit of cleverness. 39 is close to 40. 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240, 280. If I go one more, that's too far. So maybe I can start with the 39 times we counted out 7. 39 times 7, check that out and see how that comes out. If you don't second guess yourself. So we've got 260, uh, nice try. We've got 39 times 7 actually giving us, because I'm having one of those brain fart moments, 273. Uh, 7 times 9 give us 63. 7 times 321 add the 6 gives us the 273. Watch out for those brain fart moments. Do a little subtracting there, and we get 35. There are no other digits for us to carry down. 35 is smaller than our 39 out front, so we've done as much as we can possibly do and are now ready to build our answer. Our answer would be the Number up above our long division symbol, which is the quotient, followed by the remainder, which is at the very, very bottom of our work. So 227, remainder 35.
sorry for that brain fart moment, huh? If we had a larger dividend, if we had a larger divisor, again, we're gonna go through the same basic set of steps. We're going to try to find a nice division question that we can work out without getting too awfully crazy. So we start with a division question. We're gonna take whatever the answer is to that division question, we're gonna write it in the appropriate spot up on top of our long division symbol. We're gonna take that number, we're gonna multiply it by the number out in front. So step two would be a little multiplication. Step three would be to do a little bit of subtracting work. And that would give us our remainder we're going to take any numbers that have not been used. Step four, we're going to take those numbers, we're going to drop them down. We're going to repeat those steps until we can't do them anymore, until there's nothing else to drop down, and the remainder that we have is smaller than the divisor out front. Once we have reached that particular stage in our work, we're ready to build our answer. The quotient from up on top of our long division symbol is the first half of our answer. The remainder from the very end of our work is the other half, the second half of our answer. There are a couple of special situations that we need to worry about. To be a little cute about it, we can write these in a way that helps us remember them these special division problems are ones where zero appears. So if a zero appears on the top and a number appears on the bottom, being cute about it, I'm just going to use K to represent a number. OK, helping me remember that that division problem is OK. It has an answer. To try to explain what's going on here, we can go back to our idea of taking a stack of money and splitting it up between kids. So for instance, let's say that we have, from the number on top, no money, and from a just randomly selected number that would have been on the bottom, six, representing six kids. If I have no money to split up between six kids, how much does each kid get? Well, each kid would get zero. They would get nothing. The other situation is one where, again, I've tried to write this cleverly, you have a number represented by the letter N on top, you have zero represented on the bottom, and the way that that appears is as no. A number divided by zero. No, you can't do that. No, it is not defined. Again, using our money idea, if we've got a randomly selected number that would appear on top, a 100, we've got the zero on the bottom, taking $100 and splitting it up between zero kids, no kids. Well, we still have to ask the same question, how much does each kid get? But now that question doesn't make any sense because there aren't any kids. So how do you answer that kind of question when there are no kids? It doesn't make sense to ask the question. It doesn't make sense to try to answer it. So if we can't answer a question, we're dealing with a situation where things are not properly defined. We cannot provide an answer. So there is no answer. There is no definition for this. This is something that no, we cannot do. So a number divided by zero, no. Zero divided by a number, that's okay. 